Once, there was a wicked sprite that enjoyed playing tricks on others. He was one of the most mischievous sprites that ever lived. One day, he was in a really good mood. Do you know what wicked sprites do when they're in a good mood? They craft something terrible and interesting. This sprite thought it would be a good idea to make a mirror. It was no ordinary mirror. It had some strange powers. Anything that was beautiful, pure and good looked ugly, terrifying and evil in the mirror. Those things that were already good for nothing and a sore to the eye looked even uglier and even more horrific. The sprite was delighted to find that the mirror grinned whenever someone had a good thought. He showed his precise mirror to all the little sprites in his school, and there were hoots and screeches of delight. They were glad to have the mirror and flew around holding it all the time. They looked at the people through it, and eventually there wasn't a single person who didn't look ugly or distorted. In their excitement, they flew higher and higher until they were close to the stars. Suddenly, the mirror grinned and shook so much that the sprites couldn't hold it any longer. It went crashing through the skies and shattered into a million pieces, some as big as a person and others as tiny as a grain of sand. It was only after it broke that the mirror worked even more evil than ever before. Anybody who got a grain of the shattered mirror in their eye saw the world as a bleak and ugly place. Some people got a splinter in their heart. Then the mirror sucked all the love out of the heart and turned it into a lump of snow, cold and cruel. Some of the broken pieces were as large as window panes. Some shards went into people's spectacles, and even when they looked at their friends through them, all they saw were horrible, distorted creatures. The shattered glass dust floated around in the air. The evil sprite was delighted because the mirror was working better than he'd ever hoped it would. This mirror is my greatest invention ever. The greatest indeed. Let's check how it works. Everything should look disgusting in this mirror. Just look at this. It's so ugly. <laughs> look, it's so skewed. <laughs> Our teacher's a genius. Excellent. This mirror works very well. And now, my little trolls, show this mirror to the whole world. Let's spread discord and confusion among the people. We will get all humans to look into the mirror. Look at these ugly reflections. Let's find all of them. Oops! Shards of the mirror scattered around the world. That's good. Shards of the broken mirror will bring even more evil to the world. <laughs> Look at these ugly reflections. Let's find all of them. In a large town, there lived a boy and a girl. Kay and Gerda. They live next door to each other, but, oh, anybody who saw them playing together would have thought they were brother and sister. The town was so crammed with houses that the people had no place for gardens. They were content with a couple of flower pots, but the children had something just about as good as a garden. At the place where the roofs of the two houses met, they had large wooden boxes with vegetables and lovely rose bushes. Sometimes they took their stools and sat among the bushes and pretended that they were in their own big garden. 
But when the winter came, the children could no longer sit outside. They had to be content with playing inside the house. One day, Gerda and Kay were sitting by the window in Kay's house. Kay's grandmother, who was looking at the snowflakes, said quietly, The white bees are swarming. Kay and Gerda looked at her in surprise. Grandma, do the bees have a queen? Kay asked. Oh yes, they do, said Grandma. Where the swarm hangs in thick clusters, she flies there. Sometimes she flies into towns and peeps in through the windows. When she does that, the most beautiful patterns form on the window pane. Have you both seen this happen? Kay and Gerda nodded. They'd seen it many times, so Grandma was telling the truth. That evening, when Kay was sitting by the window alone, he saw something remarkable. He noticed that one snowflake was larger and prettier than the rest and sparkled in the moonlight. The flake of snow grew larger and larger. And at last it was like a young lady dressed in the finest white gauze made of a million little flakes like stars. She was so beautiful and delicate. But she was made of dazzling sparkling ice and was so full of life. She turned around to look at Kay. She nodded towards the window and beckoned with her hand. Kay was frightened and jumped down from the box. It seemed to him as if, at the same moment, a large bird flew past the window. The next day was very different. There was snowfall at first, but afterwards the sun shone brightly. Kay and Gerda cheered up because green leaves were sprouting on the trees, the birds were singing, and the windows were thrown wide open. That summer was very special because the roses that bloomed were prettier than ever before. Gerda learned a hymn that mentioned roses. She sang it to Kay, and he liked it very much. They immediately sang it together. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet, and angels descend there the children to greet. They felt so good after singing it that they went around kissing the roses. They enjoyed that summer thoroughly, and their memories were full of fresh rose bushes, warm sunshine and laughter. Kay, we haven't taken care of the flowers for quite some time now. Yes, we have to clean it up. Can you help us with the cleaning? First, let's pull out all these weeds. Now the flowers can grow without any hindrance. What's next? I think we have to cut down all the dry branches and leaves. We need hedge clippers for this job. If the branches grow longer than they are now, they will look untidy. We should trim them down. Excellent. Now we need to water the flowers. We need a watering can. What is this book you have in your hands, Gerda? This is an encyclopedia of animals. We need to place each animal close to its own silhouette on the map. Help us! Exactly! This is an elephant. It lives in Asia and Africa. It is the biggest land animal in the world. Of course! The reindeer live only in the Northern Hemisphere. The reindeer help Santa Claus deliver presents at Christmas time. That's right! This is a giraffe. It lives in Africa. 
The giraffe also has a long neck and eats leaves from the tall trees. This is a horse. It can carry goods and people. There are so many amazing animals that live in the world. I'm so glad my teacher gave me this book. By the way, we had singing class today at school. I learnt a lovely song. Wow, that's great. Go ahead and sing it. OK. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet And angels descend there the children to greet Now that's such a beautiful song. Kay and Gerda sat outside talking as the clock tower struck five. And almost at the same moment, Kay felt something fall in his eye. He rubbed his eyes and splashed water on it, but whatever it was wouldn't come out. It was one of the splinters from the magic mirror. Another piece struck his heart, and even though it didn't hurt him, it slowly changed his heart into a lump of ice. Poor Kay had changed. He looked at the roses and made a face. How ugly those roses are. They are crooked and dull, said Kay. Gerda was surprised. Kay had never spoken like that before. She brought out her book of animals and they looked at it as they had done many times. But Kay closed the book shut and said, I don't want to look at these ugly, horrid animals. Kay was so grumpy and unkind that Gerda left sadly. When she came to listen to Grandma's stories, she was surprised to see Kay smirking. He stood behind Grandma and imitated the way she told stories. He's never done anything like this before, thought Gerda. What's happened to Kay? Kay imitated others too, and it wasn't pleasant at all to watch him. Time passed by quickly, and before long it was winter again. All the little boys and girls in the town went to play in the snow. Kay hardly ever played with Gerda now. One day he took his sled and went to play with the other boys. The boldest boys often tied their sleds onto a carriage or cart and took a great ride. Kay was feeling very bold that day. When he found a pure white sled passing by, he decided that he would tie his sled onto it. Inside the carriage was a woman wrapped in white fur, and she wore a matching white fur cap. The sled rushed through the snowy slopes, and Kay found it very enjoyable at first. But when it picked up speed and crossed the town, Kay was very frightened. Finally, the sled stopped. The lady stepped out and called over to Kay. Come here and sit with me. You look cold. I'll wrap you in my bearskin. She wrapped Kay and kissed him on the forehead. The kiss was colder than ice and it went all the way to his frozen heart. As the sled took off again, the Snow Queen kissed him once more. Kay forgot his grandma, parents and Gerda. He cuddled up near the Snow Queen's feet and slept. I'll show you the games we like to play. Sledding is my favourite game. Help me. Good job. Let's do this one more time. That's enough. I'm bored of sledding. Let's make a snowman. Our snowman looks nice, but we need to dress him up a little. No, this is for decorating Christmas trees. Are you kidding me? These clothes would be right for a scarecrow, not a snowman. Yes, this is exactly what I want. Wow, I can see a beautiful sled down there. I'd like to sled on it. Ah. We have to tie my sled to it. Ah. I do this often with my friends. Can you help me get there? Help me get to that beautiful sled. Good job. Thanks a lot for your help. Let's go and don't stop.
Did you ever wonder what happened to Gerda after Kay went missing? Gerda waited and waited by the gate, but Kay did not come back. In the evening, she went to see the boys playing on their sleds. Did you see Kay? She asked. Oh yes, he tied his sled onto a big white sled and left the town. Said one of the boys. Gerda was very sad. She waited and waited for Kay right through until spring. I wonder where Kay is. I hope he's safe. She thought one day. Don't worry, he's safe. The warm sunshine spoke softly. But Kay has gone forever. She wept. No, that's not true. The swallow sang. Somehow, Gerda felt better after that. She wondered what she ought to do. She went home and put on her favorite red shoes. She went to the river and spoke sadly to it. River, did you take my beloved Kay with you? Please take these shoes and give him back. She pleaded. She threw the shoes, but they were washed back onto the river bank. I think I'll throw them farther. Thought Gerda. Suddenly, she saw a boat lying among the rushes. She got into it, and from the boat, she threw her shoes as far as she could. The boat rocked and began to drift away from the shore. Gerda was scared, but she held on tight to the boat. I never thought it would be so frightening to travel on a boat all by myself. She thought. She drifted towards a cherry orchard with a little cottage right in the middle of it. Standing outside the cottage was an old woman with a crooked stick in her hand. Help! Save me! Gerda cried out. The woman looked up sharply, and before long, she came rushing towards the stream and gently lifted Gerda off the boat. Where were you going all by yourself in that boat? Asked the woman. Gerda told her about Kay and asked the woman if she had seen him, but she shook her head. The woman liked Gerda very much, and she'd always wanted a daughter like that. She knew a bit of witchcraft, though she was a nice and harmless woman. All she wanted was to have Gerda live with her. I'm sure the rose bushes in my garden will remind this little girl of her home and her friends. Thought the woman. I'll use a bit of magic to hide them. She waved her crooked stick over the rose bushes, and they sunk into the ground. Then she softly combed Gerda's long hair and said, "You shall live here, little girl." And we'll get along wonderfully. It was almost as if Gerda was under some sort of spell. She stayed with the woman for a long time. They lived very happily. But one day she noticed a rose in the woman's bonnet. The woman had forgotten to hide it. She went into the flower garden and searched everywhere for another rose, but she couldn't find one anywhere. Slowly, Gerda sat down on the ground. Oh. Not a single rose can I see here. Gerda cried out. The hot tears from her eyes splashed on the earth, and immediately all the rose bushes pushed their way out of the ground. The moment she set eyes on the roses, all her memories of Kay came rushing back. The girl looked everywhere, but the woman was nowhere around. Without waiting for a moment. Gerda pushed open the rusty gate and ran out as fast as she could, even though nobody was chasing her. Oh, Kay! How did I forget you? Said Gerda. I must look after you. Spring and summer have passed, and it's autumn already. Back in the cherry orchard, it had been spring forever, but outside the leaves had turned yellow, and autumn was fast approaching. This is such an amazing place. There are a lot of roses here. They remind me of Kay. I must find him. All right, darling. But before you leave, can you do me a favor? Please go to the garden and gather some cherries for me. Sure. She's such a good girl. But I'm afraid that something might happen to her. It would be safer if she stayed with me. We should hide all the roses so that they won't remind her of Kay. Can you help me? That's good. Yes. Good job. I've gathered all the cherries in your garden, 
I have to leave now. All right, my dear. Will you allow me to comb your hair before you go? I wonder where I left my hairbrush. Can you see the hairbrush? Where can it be? There it is. Thank you. Magic comb. Please help this little girl forget her past and stop worrying. Well, this is it. Oh, I feel so light and free. I really like your house and this garden, but I can't help feeling like I've forgotten something. It's because you are tired, my little child. I have a room for you. You can rest there a while. I've not been there for a long time, so you will have to clean up the room. We need to clean the room. I see a cobweb in the corner of the ceiling. We'll brush it away. Let's fix the curtains. Now we need to make the beds. We have to remove that basket. Let's put some books in the shelf. Ah, oh, roses! The roses were missing in the garden. Oh, how could I have forgotten about Kay and our roses? I must leave. After a long time, Gerda could walk no more. She knew that she had to rest her tired little legs before going anywhere. So she settled down under a tree. She was most surprised when a merry raven came and hopped towards her. Ka, ka, good day, good day, he said. Gerda was surprised and delighted. She had been feeling very lonely, and the raven looked like a friendly little fellow. Have you, by any chance, seen my good friend Kay? She asked and told him everything that had happened. She described Kay carefully. The raven closed his eyes and thought about it. You know what? I might have seen your friend," he said. Gerda stood up in joy. She hugged the raven so hard that she nearly squeezed him flat. "Oh, really? Can you please take me to the place? Is he anywhere around here?" asked Gerda. "I don't mind taking you there. It isn't too far anyway. It's just that your friend might have forgotten you, for he lives with the princess now," said the raven. "Is that so?" asked Gerda. "I'll tell you the story as we walk. Listen." In the kingdom where we're going now, there lives a princess who is extraordinarily clever. She reads many books and knows what's happening everywhere around the world. She decided to marry, and there was only one thing she wanted. What? Asked Gerda out of curiosity. She invited everyone to come and speak with her. She promised to choose the one who'd talk boldly and wisely with her. And feel at home in her presence," said the Raven. "Did Kay come to the palace?" she asked. "I saw a little person walk boldly through the palace, and he didn't even have a horse. He had long hair and wore shabby clothes," said the Raven. "I also remember that his boots creaked loudly when he walked." "Oh, it must be Kay. There's no doubt," cried Gerda in delight. I remember he had his creaky boots on when we went to play with his sled that day. From what I heard, he didn't come to woo the princess. He merely wanted to speak to her and gain wisdom. It turned out that the princess liked his bold and polite nature very much," said the raven. "Will you take me to meet Kay, please?" Gerda begged. "Of course," said the raven. "My bride lives in the palace, and she can arrange for us to meet the prince." The raven then led her through the royal garden. That night, after the lights went out, the raven led Gerda through a back door that was half open. Another raven was waiting for them there. What a pleasure to meet you," said the second raven. "Come, let's go up these stairs and head to the royal chamber where the prince rests." A single lamp was burning in the chamber. And Gerda saw the prince lying in his bed. Oh, Kay, how I've missed you! Gerda said in a loud whisper. The prince heard her and turned around. Gerda was surprised and dismayed to see that it was not Kay after all. By this time, the princess had also woken up. Who are you 
you, little girl, and what are you doing here? asked the princess. Gerda sat down and told them her story. She wiped her eyes and sniffed loudly. The prince and princess felt very sorry for her. They praised the ravens for helping Gerda, but gently told them that they should never raise false hopes without being sure. You can sleep here for the night, the prince said. I'll arrange for a fine horse and carriage to take you to meet your friend, the princess offered. And I see that you are badly in need of a pair of shoes. You shall have those too. Gerda bowed and thanked them for their generosity. The next day, Gerda was dressed in the finest clothes. The princess sent her off in a splendid horse and carriage with a coachman, footman and outriders. Gerda waved and thanked them both and the ravens for everything they'd done for her. The prince and the princess wished her success and the ravens flew along with her as long as they could manage, then finally bid her farewell. The prince and princess are sleeping at this late hour. What am I going to do now? Well, firstly, you need to ring the bells. Then play the melody that lily flowers love. That must be Kay. We need to wake him up. Oh, I was wrong. It's not Kay. Who are you? What happened? Your Majesty, this girl looks for her sworn brother. He's been missing for days. Oh, poor girl. You are probably freezing. Do not worry. We will help you. Let's get a warm outfit for you. This dress is better for balls. This is just perfect for a long and cold trip. Thank you so much. I feel warmer now. There is a carriage outside waiting for you. Have a good trip. Gerda rode through the thick woods and the carriage sparkled and shone like diamonds. All of a sudden, a band of robbers jumped out from behind the bushes. Halt! If you value your life, cried the robbers, flashing their swords menacingly. They pushed away the coachman and everybody else and caught hold of the horse by its reins. The leaders of the robbers was a tall female robber who looked fearsome and bold. Her daughter, a girl about Gerda's age, was sitting on her shoulders, watching everything with shining eyes. Ouch! She cried and dropped the knife that she'd raised. Her daughter had bitten her in the ears. You will not harm the little girl, said the daughter. She will stay in our castle and play with me. After they'd looted everything, the female robber and the robber maiden got into their carriage. They made Gerda get inside as well. They rode for a long time through the thick woods. The robber maiden took Gerda's warm woolen muff for herself. Then she hugged Gerda and said, Nobody will harm you as long as we're friends. But if you dare to refuse to be my friend, I'll push you off the carriage. It seemed like they'd been riding forever, but the carriage finally stopped in front of an old and crumbling castle. It was riddled with many pigeonholes and looked so ramshackle that Gerda was afraid that it would fall down. The robber maiden led Garda straight to her room, 
which had carpets and straw beds in the corner. You shall spend the night with me and my little friends," said the robber maiden, pointing to the pigeons. Gerda noticed that there were about a hundred pigeons, and all of them were fast asleep. In a corner stood a reindeer. He had a copper ring around his neck. Meet my pet," said the robber maiden, pointing to the reindeer. After they'd had a meal and settled down to sleep, the robber maiden says, "Now tell me, what brought you here to the dark woods all alone?" Gerda narrated everything that had happened. She told her about Kay and how much she missed him. The robber maiden listened, but soon she grew drowsy and slept. She kept her hand over Gerda while she slept. The robber maiden was snoring loudly, but Gerda was wide awake. Suddenly, the pigeons called out to her. Oh, we've seen the boy. We've seen him travel in a sledge pulled by a white carriage. They said it belongs to the Snow Queen. Do you know where they are headed? Gerda asked hopefully. The Snow Queen has gone to Lapland, where there is ice and snow everywhere. Ask the reindeer; he knows the place well. Said the pigeons. Of course, I know the place. Said the reindeer. It's a glorious place, and it is. Beautiful. The Snow Queen has her summer tent there, but she doesn't live there. She lives in the icy, cold North Pole. Oh, poor Kay! He'll be taken there unless we rescue him soon," said Gerda, and slept with a heavy heart. In the morning, she told the robber maiden about what the pigeons and the reindeer had told her. "If you want to see your friend so badly, I'll help you," the robber maiden said gruffly. "We'll have to be quick." Because if my mother wakes up, you'll never be able to escape. Oh, thank you so much," said Gerda. The robber maiden looked straight at the reindeer and asked, "If I set you free, will you take this little girl safely to Lapland?" The reindeer nodded and jumped in delight. She didn't waste any time. She threw the door open and lifted Gerda onto the reindeer's back. Here, have these woolen gloves, for you'll need them," she said, stuffing a pair of gloves into Gerda's hands. "I want the woolen muff for myself, but these will do for you." She then untied the rope, and the reindeer bounded out of the room quickly. The reindeer leapt through bushes and crossed the moors fast as he could. Before long, they were in Lapland. Some pigeons saw Kay, and they say that he is in the Snow Queen's palace in Lapland. Lapland, reindeer, do you know where that is? Of course, I was born there. I played on the snowy fields when I was young. Well, little girl, I'm ready to help you, and even lend you my reindeer. But you can't just ride on it. You have to find a rope and a pillow to make a saddle. Oh, there it is. The saddle is ready. Also, don't forget to take a bridle. You found it. Take the woolen boots and mittens. You got it. Now you're ready for the long trip. Hey, little rascal! Bring me something to drink. Oops! You can't go until my mom falls asleep. What shall we do? I must leave quickly. I believe we could make a sleeping potion. Great idea, reindeer! Help me make a sleeping potion. It's almost ready. Let's dilute it.
She doesn't drink milk. Yes, ale is what we need. Now we have to stir it. The potion is ready. She has fallen asleep. Now you can be on your way. The reindeer ran on and on until he was exhausted and finally stopped before a little house. In that house, there lived an old Lapland woman. When she saw how cold and tired they looked, she immediately invited them inside. Why is a little girl riding all by herself on a reindeer? She asked. Gerda was too weak to answer, so the reindeer told her everything. Oh, you poor thing! The Lapland woman said with pity. Didn't you know that the Snow Queen has left for Finland? That's where her country house is, and you have a long way to go. At least another hundred miles. Gerda looked very crestfallen, and the Lapland woman said kindly, "Don't fret, little one. My good friend lives in Finland. I'll give you a letter explaining everything, and she will be glad to help you. But first, warm yourself and have something to eat." Gerda warmed herself by the fire and ate well. The Lapland woman wrote something on a dried fish and gave it to her. Then the woman lifted Gerda back onto the reindeer's back and tied her on safely, and the reindeer took off at once. Before long, they were trotting through Finland, and soon they found the friend's house. The house had no door but a large chimney, so they knocked at the chimney. When the Finland woman opened the door, they were greeted by a blast of heat. It was very warm inside. And Gerda soon had beads of sweat on her forehead. The Finland woman was dressed in light clothes, and she made Gerda remove all her layers as well. Gerda enjoyed the warmth and then handed over the fish. The Finland woman read the message and nodded. I know you have many magical powers," said the reindeer politely. "Can you please give this little girl a magic potion or spell to help her defeat the Snow Queen and get her friend back?" Kay has changed now," she said. "He has settled down happily with the Snow Queen, and he won't leave her even if Gerda manages to rescue him. The reason is that he has splinters from an evil mirror in his heart and eye." Gerda has all the powers she needs to defeat the Snow Queen and rescue Kay. If she can't do something by herself, there's very little we can do to help her. The Finland woman told them that they had to hurry. She lifted Gerda back onto the reindeer and tied her up. She was in such a hurry, and Gerda was wearing neither her boots nor her gloves. But the reindeer didn't want to stop. He went galloping so fast that he couldn't turn back and head over to the Finland woman's house to get Gerda's boots and gloves. The reindeer stopped only when he reached a bush with red berries. There, he set Gerda down, and she sped straight towards the Snow Queen's palace. She ran as fast as her legs could carry her. She saw a regiment of snowflakes approaching her from a distance. Gerda was sure that they'd not fallen from the sky because they were lined up outside the palace. The snowflakes came in different, terrifying shapes. Some looked like bears, while some looked like knotted snakes, and still others looked like large porcupines. Gerda was frightened because the snowflakes were alive and ran towards her to attack. She prayed to God and repeated the Lord's prayer that she'd been taught. It was so cold that she saw wisps of smoke coming out of her mouth. The smoke grew thicker and thicker. And took the form of angels. The angels had spears and shields in their hands, and by the time she'd finished saying the prayer, there was a legion of angels all around her. The angels thrust their spears at the snowflakes. The snowflakes shattered into a thousand pieces. Gerda walked on bravely. The angels patted her gently on the head, and quite miraculously. Gerda found the cold much more bearable.
Hello, travelers. What brings you here? This girl is looking for her brother. The Snow Queen took him to her palace. We need to find that palace. Oh, then you need to get to Vindmark. I'll give you the message that you can take to the Finland woman. She lives around that part of town. She will tell you to reach your destination. But what can I use to write the message? I don't have any paper. Excellent. This is what I need. While I'm writing the message, can you help me cook this fish? The fish is cooked. Oops! I think you burnt the fish. That's okay. The fish is cooked. The fish is cooked. Well, the message is ready. You should be on your way now. Thank you so much. We have to find the Finland woman quickly. I almost fell on the icy ground. Be careful. Be careful! I almost fell on the icy ground! The Lapland woman said that we should give you this message. Well, let me see the message. All right, I think I know what to do. If you want to rescue Kay, what you need to do is remove the broken pieces of glass from his heart and eyes. Otherwise, he won't remember you. You are a very wise woman. Could you please give a magic potion or spell to this little girl to help her defeat the Snow Queen? She already has a great power. She traveled halfway around the world. People and animals are eager to help her. Her greatest power is her big, kind heart. This power alone can rescue Kay. There is no need for any other spell or potion. All right, but what should we do next? Go to the Snow Queen's garden right away. There's no time to lose. It's not far from here. Ride directly to the north. All right. Thank you very much. She is such a brave girl. Every I will be seeing Kay soon. Gerda sped to the palace. She stared in awe at the Snow Queen's palace because the walls were made of driving snow. The windows and doors were made of cutting winds and there were hundreds of empty halls. Right in the middle of the biggest hall of snow was a big frozen lake. In the middle of the lake, there was an icy throne, where the Snow Queen sat when she was home. But thankfully, 
The Snow Queen had gone off to warm lands to look down into the mouths of two volcanoes, Mount Vesuvius and Mount Etna. Gerda was overjoyed to see Kay. He was sitting on the ground playing with some slabs of ice. Kay looked nearly blue and black with the cold, and he was still in his ragged clothes. But he didn't seem to feel the cold winds or the icy chillness. When the Snow Queen kissed him, she'd taken away all the feeling of cold from his body. He was trying to arrange the ice in different ways to make all sorts of figures with those slabs. Sometimes he found figures that represented a word, but he had not succeeded in finding the words he was desperately looking for. It so happened that the word he was searching for most desperately was eternity. The Snow Queen had told him, "Find a figure to represent eternity, and I'll set you free. You can be your own master, and I'll present you with the whole world and a new pair of skates." Maybe the Snow Queen was confident that he would never guess it ever. Kay was very busy with his ice puzzle. As she left, Kay was all alone. He didn't look up, nor did he show any emotion. He sat very still and looked almost lifeless. It was at that very moment that Gerda stepped through a portal and arrived at the very place where Kay sat. The moment she saw him, she was so overcome with joy that she ran towards him, shouting in joy. Oh, Kay! How I've missed you! How cold and blue you look, my poor Kay! She embraced him and cried in joy. I found you at last, and all my efforts didn't go in vain. Kay sat quite still, numb and cold, with all the time he'd spent in the icy palace. He didn't even recognize Gerda. Overcome by emotion and joy, Gerda wept over his shoulders, and as she cried her heart out, the hot tears rolled out of her cheeks and plopped onto his chest. Her pure tears melted away the splinter. That had been struck in his heart for such a long time. Gerda held his hands and cried on his shoulders, and that was when Kay found tears in his eyes too. When he began to cry, the splinter that had been stuck fast in his eye rolled out with the tears and fell onto the icy ground below. Immediately afterwards, Kay was filled full of joy and warmth. And he recognised Gerda, his sweet and loyal friend. Oh, Gerda, hasn't it been long since we saw each other? Kay asked. And where am I? I know not how I came here. How empty and cold this place is! What have I been doing here? Said Kay. Gerda and Kay held their hands together, and they looked so blissful that the ice slabs on the ground began to dance around them in joy. They danced on and on, and finally lay down on the ice. When the ice slabs lay down on the ice, they formed the exact letters needed for eternity. K was now his own master and free to leave the place and go to where he wished. That was not all. He was entitled to a new pair of skates, and the whole world was his, as promised by the Snow Queen. This is the gateway to the Snow Queen's throne room. Can you please help me to open it? Thank you. Now I need to hide somewhere. Well, boy, did you manage to assemble the symbol of eternity? No matter how hard I try, I can't do it. Well, if you're able to do it, I'll give you the whole world and a new pair of skates. I'll be leaving you for now and fly to warmer places. All right. My dear Kay, I finally found you. He doesn't recognise me. What should I do so that he can remember me? Oh no! I left the book at home. Great! I think I could sing him my song. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet, and angels descend there, the children to greet. Gerda, my dear Gerda, where have you been all this time? Oh, it doesn't matter. We are together again. That's what matters. Now we can go back home. Oh no! I'm locked inside here. To get out, I need to solve the Snow Queen's puzzle. Can you help us? 
We need to put together the symbol of eternity. Now we can go home. Okay, but first I have to help these animals. Of course, we need to unfreeze them. This Finally, is it! Finally, we can go home. <coughs> they held onto each other's hands and ran out of the palace heading straight for the bush with red berries. The reindeer was still waiting for Gerda, and beside him was another young reindeer. Hurrah! cried Kay and Gerda as they rode on their reindeers. They exchanged each other's stories along the way. First, they went to Finland Woman's house and warmed themselves before proceeding on their journey. Kay felt much better as the warm room thawed his cold hands and feet. Then they went on to visit the Lapland Woman, who fed them and repaired his sled. They rode for a long time. And soon they heard the church bells ring. Oh, look, Kay! Gerda cried out suddenly. We're in our own town. Sure enough, they turned round a corner and found that they were back in their own street with all its familiar houses. They got down from their reindeers and sped straight into Kay's grandma's room. Everything looked just the same. Yet they knew that something had changed. They found that the roses from the rose bushes were peeping inside through the window. Their chairs were there near the window, and they went to sit down there as they always used to. And Kay and Gerda looked in each other's eyes, and all at once they understood the old hymn. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet, and angels descend there the children to greet. There they sat as two grown-up persons, grown up and yet children. Children, at least in heart, and it was summer time—a warm, glorious summer.